So in this video, I'm going to talk about a couple of uh, trends uh, which have a questionable efficiency pattern preparing a job interview. And uh, to understand my perspective, I've, I'm someone who's selling myself to other people on YouTube, on, on various other places, and I've uh, done this for a number of years. Uh, both successfully and unsuccessfully. I wanted to share with you my two cents on how these things actually work because now I also see some data from my training programs um, and on how these uh, new technologies, on how these new trends impact interview prep. And there are actually three of these that I'm going to talk about next. And the first one, and of course the most uh, common of them, is the use of generative AI. So uh, what I did here was to integrate this possibility to generate answers for your own role in my training programs. And uh, people click a lot <laughs> on, on this type of feature. People are, have a tendency to overuse these examples uh, because it probably makes them feel good about this. And uh, also uh, another important reason for this is because AI is trendy. Right? So the, the major businesses have a lot of interest in making this, uh, this new trend quite popular. So maybe that's also a reason for people to feel quite good about generating their own answers using AI, preparing for a job interview. Uh, now, what you may not know is that uh, this uh, approach of using uh, someone else's examples, if you want to prepare for a job interview, is uh, highly inefficient to put it this way. And uh, the reason I know this is because I see that the people who use the most this feature in my training programs are not the ones who tell me that they were successful uh, receiving job offers, right? So uh, you should understand that the difference between what works, what, what doesn't for the purpose of job interview. And uh, if some element, something is trending, like the AI, uh, the best use case for such uh, a technology would be something that might help you preparing a job interview, right? Um, and if, if you want to think in this way, why the, the primary reason why uh, generative AI has only a very limited uh, use case to prepare your job interview is because it provides you with content. It doesn't stimulate you to create content. Right, uh, th this would be the main reason behind that. Um, the second trend I want to talk about here, and this has become more and more common, especially on YouTube, and also links a little bit with generative AI, would be for people to over prepare their elevator pitches. So it's true that in the past, your first impression would be the last impression. Um, and uh, truth be said, there are people who do those elevator pitches quite well with some motivational ones and really amazing ones. However, expectations in job interviews today have evolved over time. So what worked 10 years ago might not be as relevant piece of advice as it was today. And this is one of them. And if you want another example, take a website. The website which looked well 10 years ago no longer looks that well today, right? So it's on the same thing. And um, here again, ChatGPT can give you some amazing examples and ideas of elevator pitches for your own uh, role and even for the company that you're applying for. However, uh, this is, uh, in my opinion, not, not enough of, of a reason for you to over prepare these things. Um, on YouTube, you know, there are YouTube channels who do this, tell me about yourself every, every week. Right, and they get a ton of views and very good for them. But this doesn't mean if this is trending, you should jump on this trend immediately, right? So you should really focus on what actually works for you. And if you want a little bit of advice from, uh, from a more technical perspective, uh, these elevator pitches have been replaced with something which I call uh, the behavioral part of the interview. You know, the tell me about one of your project, what's your most challenging project, tell me about the time you failed, and these types of questions. Right, which, uh, as with the elevator pitch, could be a starting point for a more technical or more specific conversation, if you want. But long story short, uh, the elevator pitch, if it used to be a big part of interviews 10 years ago, now uh, maybe it still is, but only for jobs at McDonald's, if you want, right? Where the interview is not the main thing, okay? So the second one was your elevator pitch. And um, the third trend I want to talk about here uh, would be the dangerous precedent 
that has been set during the pandemic. So during the pandemic, when there was a huge hiring spree in many places, uh, or actually, I should say, immediately after the pandemic happened, there was a huge hiring spree where employers were actually uh, desperately looking to fill in certain roles because they wrongly predicted they would need them, right? And therefore, when you when the market is candidate driven, expectations from a candidate in a job interview decrease, right? And uh, this doesn't mean that this will always be the case, right? Uh, so similarly, there are uh, some some people that I work with tell me then I've Last time I interviewed was 10 years ago and it wasn't a proper interview, right? So if your last interview wasn't a proper interview, doesn't mean your next interview won't be a proper interview, right? So the, this dangerous precedent of what to expect, right? Now, uh, to be completely honest with you, there are people who pass interviews without ever preparing them, right? Those two top two, top two three percent of, of candidates who basically have great CVs and are great communicators, uh, so basically, they don't have to really prepare on these things. And if you're one of them, then uh, congrats to you. Uh, I don't believe that interview prep <laughs> makes a ton of uh, will make a ton of difference for your own role. However, uh, most of us are not those two or three percent, right? And uh, we should be taking uh, these interviews more seriously. And uh, last but not least, uh, I believe that people uh, grossly overestimate uh, the how these interviews. Uh, might not be as sexy as most of you think, right? So uh, there are, there's actually some critical chasm that most of you have to pass to become proficient with, I'm speaking about behavioral interviews here and uh, preparing job interviews from experience uh, has been far more successful for people who prepare story banks, uh, which are quite boring, you know, quite intense to prepare. And some people spend six months or one year or some people maintain those story banks over the years. Right, uh, so um, passing these job interviews can be uh, can be a, I mean is often a matter of uh, preparing those and focusing on generating content. Again, preparing your story bank. By the way, you can do this for free on my website as, as of right now. But um, don't jump on trends, thinking that they will save your job interview. This is actually an approach that. I didn't find uh, I didn't find extremely efficient, right? So what I would recommend to you would be to focus on producing your own content. Eventually, do a little bit of role play here and there. Maybe use a little bit of AI to evaluate your answers, to even score your answers if you want. Uh, but at best, you know, use them as some secondary help, some maybe a method to entertain yourself with these things. Hopefully, you found this. Uh, information useful and thank you very much for watching.